This past Friday marked seven years and seven months of me being the pastor here at All Saints Parish. For those of you who do not know, sometimes I preach two or three homilies at a Mass, and uh, clearly that is because I often feel very convicted about things that I need to say, and I try to figure out how I can say all of them in one Mass. So welcome to homily number two. Our Gospel passage today from the Gospel of Mark should be very familiar to you, for the, particularly if you've ever been to a baptism outside of the context of Mass. Priests often choose this Gospel passage from the Gospel of Mark. People are bringing their children to Jesus, and some of the disciples start pushing the children away. They're loud, they're crying, they're fidgeting, they might smell. They're keeping us from being able to be attentive. So we push the children away. And Jesus, of course, wants nothing with this. And he says, let the children come to me. Don't prevent them. Let the children come to me. The kingdom of God belongs to such as these. I have in my mind from traveling across the country and even, thanks be to God, across the globe of stained glass windows of this beautiful image of Jesus seated children being brought to him, one on his lap, one on his shoulder, paintings, sketches, drawings. Let the children come to me. This past week during one of my holy hours, as I was reflecting upon this passage, I received a grace, what I believe is a grace. We believe that Satan is the great deceiver, Satan is the prince of lies. He's the prince of darkness. He imitates. He's an imposter. He's a counterfeit. And he presents us with great lies that seem tremendously enticing. As I was praying and I was reflecting upon this quote of our Lord, let the children come to me, do not prevent them. I realize that that is exactly what Satan says. Let the children come to me. Let the children come to me. Don't prevent them. Don't prevent them. Just let them come. The kingdom of heaven does not belong to them. The kingdom of darkness My kingdom, the kingdom of Satan. As I heard this, I began to think just about our world, and it was like scales just fell from my eyes. It all became very real. I'll give you some vivid examples. When I was a young child, there are four television stations. One of them was PBS. I used to like to watch Sesame Street and Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. I remember watching a documentary about Jim Henson just a few years ago. And in it, Jim Henson, the inventor of the Muppets and Sesame Street, said that my goal was not just to entertain children, I realized that I wanted to also entertain their parents. So for those of you who remember, like, just the Muppet show, there would often be, like, big stars, like Barbara Streisand or Kenny Rogers or Anne Murray that would also make appearances on the show. And in Sesame Street, they would often take popular songs and they would change the lyrics. I actually clearly remember from one of the episodes of Sesame Street, the whole episode was focused on the letter B. And we learned all these things about the letter B with Snuffleupagus and Oscar the Grouch and Big Bird. And I clearly remember that there were a bunch of Muppets and they were singing a song that I did not know that went like this. 
letter B, letter B, letter B, yeah, letter B. Learning lots of words that start with B. I was about eight years old, I can still sing the song. But you wanna know what? My parents knew that tune. Fast forward to 2019, 2020. Who is now appearing on Sesame Street? Little Nas X. Who is Little Nas X? Many of you might know him for his hit that remained on the charts longer than any other song. Old Town Road. Little Nas X has clearly said that he wants to be an entertainer for children. In the midst of his song making the top of the charts, Little Nas X reveals to the world that he has same sense attraction. He then comes out with his next song. Where in that song, in the music video that he created, he letter, literally enters into sexual relations with Satan in the video. He then is invited to be on Sesame Street with Elmo. The week after he releases the video, he also then releases a new shoe, a tennis shoe for children, that has Satan on it, a pentagram, and literally contains real human blood. I'm not making any of this up. This is now Sesame Street. And what does Sesame Street say? Let the children come to me. Let the children come to me. Don't prevent them. Let the children come to me. Satan worshiping? Sexual relations with Satan? Human blood and tennis shoes? Pentagrams? Let the children come. Yes, the little children. What about our schools? Critical race theory. Let's teach our children that they are bad from their birth. Let them tell them that they are bad just by being born. Let the children come to my school. Let me teach them who they are. When I was a young child, going to the library was awesome. When I was a young child, going to story time at the library was something that Terry Meyer like, literally thought was fantastic. We would go to story time at the library and my mom would actually be able to like go and read adult books. Now, you can go to the library, you can drop your child off, and a man dressed like a woman will read stories to your children about how they have no gender. How they were born is a lie. Let them come to me. Let the children come to me. Do not prevent them. Don't prevent your children from coming, please. What about the internet? I don't know if you've ever tried to take your phone away from, like, a teenager. Good luck. Try taking a phone away from, like, a child who's six or seven who's been, like, using that phone. They will resist you. They've already become addicted to the images. They've already become addicted to the glow. They've already become addicted to the sensation of instant gratification. Let the children come to me. Let them come. Addiction, gaming, pornography, but what else? A self-image, body image, anorexia, bulimia, bullying, social media pressure. Let them come to me. 70% of parents admit to the fact that there are no blockers and they do not have regulations on how their children engage on the internet. Do not hinder them. Do not prevent them. Let them come to me. This past week, as I was coming home from a cross-country meet, 
we were getting off the bus and I overheard a conversation. One of my athletes, who is also a parishioner, was being made fun of. His parents have not given him a phone, even though he is a high schooler, and he does not have access to the internet in his house without his parents being with him. And I heard the mockery. Man, we can never get a hold of you. We can never contact you. Man, we can't Snapchat with you. You're not in our group texts. Your parents are controlling. So I stepped in, shut the boys down, and one of them continued. Man, I remember when the first thing, I, when I got, first got my phone, the first thing I did was typed in top 10 things kids shouldn't look at on their phone. This is a direct quote. I can still tell you all 10. Now, why can he do that? Most likely because there are pictures and videos which now are ingrained to his mind for the rest of his life. I tried to time it so that I would be leaving the school at the same time as the young man from our parish. His dad was outside with some of his siblings waiting to pick him up. And I intentionally walked over to his dad's car and I said, hey, I just want to let you know like, what just happened. And I said, I want your son to hear this and I want your son to hear me say to you that you are a really good dad. You do what you do because you love your son. The dad actually got a little choked up and he said, Father, thank you. I don't get told that I'm a good dad. Let them come to me. Let the little children come to me. Don't prevent them. Don't have blockers. Allow your children to have phones. Allow them to have completely and totally free range on the internet. Don't prevent them. Don't hinder them. It's good for them. It's natural for them. This is what they need. Whose voice is this? This is not the voice of our Lord. What is the goal? What is the end of all of this? I was speaking to Father Hallowell early this week, and many of you know that Father Hallowell and I, many of us priests, I try to talk to three priests every single day, and I was talking to him, and I was just like, man, I think this is where I'm going to go with my homily. And he was like, that is so crazy. He said, I was just thinking earlier this week, I used to ask myself, like, what is behind all of this? And he said, I used to think it was money. I really used to think that, like, behind the internet and behind the pornography, that, that, that it was money. He said, I, I'm, I'm thoroughly convinced that it's no longer money. It is ultimately about control, and it is ultimately leading people to hell, and it is ultimately about Satan. I said, I totally agree. So, I mean, like, literally, if we, if, we, if we pause and we stop and we say, like, wh where is all of this leading? Corruption? Addiction? Deception? Hurt? Abuse? Loneliness? Isolation? What is that? That is hell! Let the children come to me. I want to teach your children. So what's the good news in today's gospel? That Jesus is actually the one who has originally said it. We've just fallen for the imposter. We've fallen for the counterfeit. We've fallen for the lie. But Jesus is the one who said, no, let the children come to me. Don't prevent your children from coming to me. And what does Jesus want for them? He wants life. He wants peace. He wants family. He wants joy. He wants laughter. He wants freedom. He wants confidence. He wants strength. That's what he wants for our life. That's what he wants for all of us who are his baptized sons and daughters. That's what he wants for us. And yet so often as a priest, I'll be like, hey, you want to what? We're having a marriage encounter. We're having a marriage retreat. Hey, we're having a youth group. Hey, we're having this opportunity. Father, we're just too busy. Like, we're, we're just too busy. Like, it's like so much happening in our lives.
do not hinder them. Many of us who are in the battle, we constantly look at our world and we, we moan and groan when we see what's happening to our culture and to our society. And yet I will tell you that there's also a blessing. If you haven't yet come to the conclusion, we no longer live in a Christian world. Let me repeat that. If you have not yet come to the conclusion, we no longer live in a Christian world. We live in a post-Christian world. And the sooner that you admit that and verbalize that, then things are no longer gray. It's now all very easy. It's actually very black and white. And the more toxic it gets, the clearer it becomes if you allow yourself to realize the world that we live in. We cannot expect our politicians and our leaders to lead us to a Christian world when they themselves are literally engaged in satanic practices. When they are promoting entertainment and an industry that is satanic. This is the world we live in. Let them come to me. Let your children come to me. And that is why we have to rejoice that Jesus says, no, come to me. I'll bring you hope. I'll bring you joy. I'll bring you life. I'll bring you family. That's our hope today. But we also have to open our eyes and realize how clear it is. And to no longer be deceived or to think that this is all normal or okay, because it's not. It's not going to lead you to freedom. There's only one thing that will. And that is Christ. Whose end goal for you is truth and community and joy and life and freedom. All of you, my dear people, are his children. And he wants you to come to him. Because he wants to take you to his kingdom. His kingdom. His kingdom. And that's what we head to right now. At every Mass, we participate in heaven here on earth, and we are brought to the glories of heaven, where there is communion and peace and joy and freedom. As we enter into the Holy Sacrifice today, may we reject what is clearly not of God. And may nothing prevent us from doing so. And may we truly become his children here on earth and one day in heaven. Amen.